Hello, welcome back. So in the last lecture on microwave mixers, we studied mixer fundamentals. We covered the basic mixer operation. We saw what is the symbol and circuit representation of a mixer. And the mixer operation is basically if you have two frequency signals given at the mixer inputs, the mixer should produce the sum and the difference frequency outputs. And one of these outputs is chosen depending on the type of the mixer, which can be either up conversion or down conversion. Uh, we see that the mixer is implemented using nonlinearity basically and there are two types of mixer implementation one is using nonlinear device and another using a time variant system linear time variant system and uh, if we implement a mixer using physical devices what we see at the mixer output which is quite different than the ideal mixer output and this mixer non idealities are measured using various mixer performance metrics which are conversion loss or gain. Then we have uh, port to port isolation, we have linearity, noise figure, spurious response and so on. So in this lecture what we are going to do, we are uh, going to start with uh, the devices that we use for mixers which are diodes and transistors. We will see how these devices basically provide mixing action. And then we'll switch to various mixer circuits. We'll analyze these circuits and try to understand how these circuits produce mixing actions and how they can be used to implement a good performance mixer. Let's begin. So we are going to study uh, different mixer circuits, which are single-ended mixers, single balance mixers, double balance mixers, subharmonically pumped mixers, and image reject mixers. And before going to these circuits, let's first understand the mixer devices that we use. First is the diode. Unlike in most of the operations, a PN junction diode is never used in mixing action uh, for the reason that the PN junction diodes have very long recombination carrier lifetimes, which is quite undesired for mixers because mixers have to be switched very fast. So the diodes have to be switched very fast and for that we need very low carrier recombination lifetime which is given by the short kit diodes which are unipolar or majority carrier devices. So in most of the mixers we use short kit diodes and we avoid PN junction diodes. So we have a diode connected in this fashion and we know that the diode IV characteristic given by this nonlinear or exponential curve. The black dot that you see here is the biasing point and what first happens is to this diode we present the LO signal which is one of the mixer input ports. We present the LO signal, this time varying LO signal which has quite a large amplitude or a higher signal level drives the output current of the diode, it modulates the current by changing the diode junction voltage in this fashion. So the current is swept from a minimum value to a maximum value by the incoming LO signal and this modulation of current actually gives rise to a modulation of conductance of the diode because the diode conductance is nothing but the partial derivative of diode current with respect to the diode voltage. So G of t is equal to dou ID by dou VD and since VD is being changed in time by the LO signal we get a time varying diode conductance and the waveform looks like this. So we have this time varying diode conductance waveform which has a fundamental frequency of omega LO. This is the basic of mixing action that the LO signal which is a large amplitude signal causes one of the diode parameters to change in time. So you have a time varying conductance and the variation is at the LO frequency. After this, we apply the RF signal which is of low level compared to the level of the LO signal and because the RF signal is very small, we can apply the small signal model of the diode and this model contains a time varying capacitance which is a junction capacitance, a time varying conductance and a series resistance RS which accounts for the losses inside the diode. So we understood that the conductance time variance is because of the time varying LO waveform that is applied across the diode and this waveform actually also modulates the diode capacitance but in the mixing action the dominating effect is because of the conductance so we have focused only on the conductance part. 
Now it's very simple. The IF output is given as the conductance into the input voltage. So current is basically conductance into voltage. So VRF multiplies with G of T to produce the IF current output. And this is basically what we want. We have two signals multiplying with each other and these two signals are at different frequencies. So VRF is at omega RF frequency. G of T has a fundamental frequency of omega LO and hence when we multiply these two signals at the output or the IF port, I should get the difference and the sum frequencies. Now of course this waveform is not pure sinusoid. So it will contain additional frequency components along with omega LO and hence you will expect some spurious response in the output which has to be filtered out. This is the basic of how a diode can produce mixing action and because a diode cannot provide signal amplification the diodes are mainly used in passive mixers. So there are two types of mixers depending on whether they provide signal amplification or not. One is a passive mixer another one is an active mixer. So if you use diodes the mixer will be of passive type. FET or field effect transistor is an another type of device that is used for mixing. Uh, the analysis is very similar. So you have a gate, drain and source terminals of a field effect transistor. The input signal is applied across the gate and the source and the drain current is taken as the output. And we know that the relation between ID, drain current and the VGS, the voltage difference between the gate and the source again varies exponentially but this is a square law device, it does not contain a third order term. And the same, we apply the LO signal at the VGS port. This LO signal modulates the drain current from a minimum value to a maximum value and the transconductance of the FET which is given by uh, this expression, so partial derivative of the drain current with respect to the voltage difference between gate and source is also modulated because of this LO signal and the modulated waveform is like this. So the time varying transconductance is the basic factor that causes the mixing and this variation is at a fundamental frequency of omega LO which is same as the LO frequency which we are inputting at the mixer or the FET in this case. After this we apply a small signal RF and because the signal level is very small compared to the LO signal we can apply a small signal model of FET which is quite involved compared to the diode model. So we have RG, RD, RS as the resistances at all the three ports. We also have CGD, CGS and RDS which are also time varying. So the time variation in these small signal parameters is also caused by the incoming LO signal. And the most dominant of all this is this GM into VGS or the GM which is the transconductance and hence the drain current is actually modulated by the LO signal. So the drain current is now given by the transconductance into the input voltage which is VGS. So now we are considering the small signal models. So VGS contains only the RF frequency. GM we know that has a fundamental frequency of omega LO and the output current because we are multiplying these two signals should contain the difference and the sum of these two frequencies which is the desired mixing action. The transconductance being a not pure sinusoidal will contain other frequency terms and you will also have other frequency components present in the ID which have to be filtered out using appropriate filtering action. So this is how fundamentally a FET device produces mixing action and because a FET or a transistor can provide signal amplification, FET can be used to implement passive as well as active mixers so which is a very important point and all the active mixers are actually implemented using MOSFETs or BJTs these days. So now we know that how a diode and FET provide mixing action. Now we will see how these components are actually added to give a complete mixer circuit. Let us take a simple case, a simplest form which is a single device mixer or single ended mixer using a diode. Let us first analyze the circuit here. So I have a diode here which causes the mixing. 
which is biased using an RF choke and a DC bias to avoid the DC signal to flow into the input and output high frequency ports we have this DC block capacitors. The RF and LO signal are provided at the input of the diode and they are separated using a diplexing coupler to provide the necessary isolation. At the output the IF is taken after filtering either low pass or band pass. So the operation is quite simple we have VI input voltage at the diode input to be the sum of the RF and the LO voltage which are nothing but sinusoids varying at omega RF and omega LO frequency and using a non-linear equation Taylor series expansion of the diode we know that the IF current will have the DC part linear dependency square cubic terms and so on. So if I simplify this particular expression the IF current output at the difference frequency will have this amplitude. So it will have V into ARF into ALO and the cosinusoidal term. Now the conversion loss of this mixer is nothing but the voltage at the IF port to the voltage at the RF port which is given as B ARF into ALO into RL. This is the current part taken across a load resistor and ARF is the input signal amplitude. So if you take the ratio we we'll see that the conversion loss actually depends on ALO which is the LO signal amplitude level. So it's very important factor. So the conversion loss actually depends on the LO power level as well as it depends on the diode parameters but the LO power level dependency is very critical. You can have a good or a bad conversion loss or gain performance if you choose the LO power optimally. Port to port isolation in this case depends on this coupler over here and for IF port it depends on how good rejection this low pass filter provides. Noise figure and intermodulation response actually depends on the diode characteristics which are inherent to this diode. So, so the diode selection plays a critical part to get the noise figure and intermodulation response. This is a simple circuit of a diode mixer single device and such a single device mixers can also be implemented using FET devices or transistors. So the major advantage FETs have over BJTs and diodes is that these are square law devices so they do not contain any cubic term in the output current expression so they have a better linearity. Let us consider simple circuit using FET we have an RF signal applied at the gate. LO signal applied at the source terminal and the output is taken at the drain. Now the advantage is being a FET it can provide a conversion gain and because RF and LO are applied at two different ports of the FET you have a good LO to RF isolation compared to the single diode mixers which we just studied and a better or improved LO to RF isolation can be achieved if a dual gate MOS is used to implement a mixer using FETs. So in this case we have a dual gate MOSFET and the LO signal is given to one of the gate and the RF signal is given to the other gate terminal. The output is taken at the drain and you have a stabilizing circuit over here. So the advantage of FET uh, mixers is that they can provide gain, they can provide better LO to RF isolation and they have better linearity. Going forward we are going to discuss balance mixers and other types of mixer circuits and to understand the circuit behavior or to analyze the circuit we will use diodes going forward and we will avoid FETs. Similar circuits can be implemented using FETs with some modifications. Let us understand the next type of the mixer which is single balanced mixer. The purpose of balancing action is to remove either the input signal or the LO signal from appearing into the output. We will see how this is achieved. So this is a typical circuit for a single balanced mixer. So this is my RF input signal provided to a 1 as to 2 transformer and we have a diode arrangement like this. So this arrangement is very important. Uh, you cannot have any arbitrary arrangement of diodes and still achieve balancing. So if you have a, this particular configuration I have to have this diode orientation appropriately. So I have these two diodes which are connected in antiparallel fashion. LO signal is given at the center type of the transformer and the IF signal is taken across a load. Now before going to the 
circuit analysis important thing LO signal is always very very greater than the RF signal and if you observe the RF signal is actually provided out of phase for these two diodes. So, in the secondary of the transformer you have RF as plus minus and plus minus. So, both these RF signals appear across these diodes in out of phase manner and that is why the RF currents actually circulate among these diodes and we call this as a balancing action and the RF currents do not appear in the output. We will study this in detail further. Let us say that the center tap is ideal and in that case this circuit can be reduced to this. So, you have a VLO, the VRF at the secondary of the transformer, these two diodes and the output voltage. Now, in case VLO is greater than 0, diode D1 is on and we get VLO, VRF and VIF path. So, VIF is nothing but addition of VLO and VRF. When the VLO is less than 0, we get D2 on, D1 off. So, the path is VLO, VRF and the IF signal. So, in this case VIF is given as VLO minus VRF. Mathematically, I can write it in this form. So, VIF which is the output voltage is equal to VLO plus VRF into P of t. Now, this P of t is nothing but a square wave which ranges from plus 1 to minus 1 and the frequency at which this transition happens is nothing but the LO frequency. So, the output voltage is nothing but VLO plus VRF into P of t, P of t is given as this, it is a square wave transition between plus 1 and minus 1 with a frequency equal to the LO frequency or the local oscillator frequency. Now, the Fourier analysis of P of t, we know that it is a square wave, so it will contain the fundamental frequency omega LO as well as all of its odd harmonics. And if we simplify this equation by substituting the expression of P of t, what we get is this. So, the VIF of t which is the final output contains the omega LO term which is the LO signal. It also contains mixing terms which are given as here. So, for n equal to 0 if you see we get omega LO minus omega RF and we get omega LO plus omega RF which are the desired mixing outputs. However, we also get various other mixing terms which are basically mixing of odd harmonics of LO with the RF frequency. So, at the output we have just the LO signal, we do not have the RF signal and we say that the RF signal is balanced out. But we also get various Fourier signals which are centered around odd harmonics of the LO. So, this is how a single balance mixer fundamentally works. Next, we will see a practical single balance mixer circuit and we will again emphasize on the balancing action. So, this is the circuit using 180 degree hybrid coupler and a diode arrangement. Again, the diode arrangement is anti parallel and the IF signal is taken after appropriate low pass or band pass filtering. So, RF signal is applied at the sum port of this 180 degree hybrid coupler, the LO signal is applied at the delta port of this 180 degree hybrid coupler and we know that a 180 degree hybrid coupler is implemented using a rat race as shown over here. So, we have ports 1, 2, 3, 4, we know that 1, 3 and 2, 4 are isolated from each other and in this case 2 is the sum port, 4 is the delta port represented in here. So, this is this is the uh, part where the RF signal is applied and this is the part where the LO signal is applied. Now, again remember the balancing action is one of the input signal is actually balanced out the IF currents because of one of the signal just circulates around here and it does not appear in the output. So, in this case if you observe the IF current is given as I1 minus I2 and the RF signal if you see is applied in phase to ports 1 and 3 where the diodes are connected. So, for the both diodes the RF signal is applied in phase. So, the IF currents produced at the output are also in phase because of the RF signal. Now, for LO signal if you see here if I apply LO input at the delta port at port 1 and 3 the LO signal is actually appearing out of phase. 
So for these two diodes, the yellow signal appears out of phase. So the IF currents that are produced because of the yellow signal are also out of phase and they are balanced out. So another important observation in this circuit analysis is that all the M N spurious responses with both M and N as even numbers are eliminated, which is a very important factor. So we will have less spurious response. The 2 1 term response is eliminated, but 1 2 is not. Okay, so this was single balance mixes. The idea was you balance out one of the input signals and you prevent it to appear in the output. We we'll see next the double balance mixers where the idea is neither LO nor the input which is the RF actually appear in the mixer output. So simple in case of single balance mixers for two of the diodes one of the signal was applied out of phase here we have four diode arrangement and for one diode pair RF signal is applied out of phase for another diode pair the LO signal is applied out of phase and this is how the balancing action will be performed. We will study this operation in detail and we see that when VLO is greater than 0, D2 and D3 will be on and VLO is less than 0, D1 and D4 will be on. So let us take both these cases and analyze further. So we have first case VLO greater than 0, only D2 and D3 will be conducting. So the circuit reduces to this, the diodes are replaced by equivalent resistor RD. And if we rearrange this, we get a circuit which is similar to this. Now notice that VIF which is the desired output voltage is nothing but the product of RL and the current flowing through it. So the job is to determine what is the effective current that flows into this load resistor. So we have a loop current I1 flowing in the first loop, I2 flowing in the second loop and if you do the math, we saw for VRF in for both the loops, we get I1 plus I2 equal to VRF by RL plus RD by 2. So VIF is nothing but minus VRF into RL divided by RL plus RD by 2. Notice the sign for the first case when VLO is greater than 0, I get a minus sign. For VLO less than 0, D1 and D4 will conduct, we do the similar analysis and what we get is VIF equal to plus VRF into RL divided by RL plus RD by 2. So there is a sign change and as we have seen in the previous analysis, the output voltage will be given by this term VRF into a constant into P of T where P of T is nothing but a square wave at a fundamental frequency equal to omega LO ranging from plus 1 to minus 1. So the output equation if you see here, it does not contain any of the input signals. It does not contain a signal with frequency omega RF, it does not also contain a signal with frequency omega LO. However, if you notice this expression for n equal to 0, you get the desired mixing, but for n not equal to 0, you have other spurious mixing products which are nothing but centered at odd harmonics of the LO frequency. So, this is how a double balanced mixer works. It balances out both the input RF signal as well as the LO signal and prevent it to appear in the mixer output. So we have a better spurious rejection in case of balanced mixers. Next kind of mixer we will see is a subharmonically pumped mixer. This mixer is mainly used when a high frequency LO cannot be generated. So for applications such as millimeter wave mixers, it is very difficult to generate a local oscillator signal with good stability, the desired power level which is high and reasonable cost. So this is a circuit used for subharmonically pumped mixer. Uh, we have an omega RF, omega LO by 2. So instead of having omega LO, we have the signal frequency which is half the desired frequency and this is the omega IF which is the output. The crux of this is the anti-parallel arrangement of the diodes as you can see here. And this diode arrangement as we can see will give the desired mixing which is the mixing of omega RF and omega LO even if we are supplying half the LO frequency. So we have the necessary filters to filter out uh, the respective signals and uh, we will see now how this anti-parallel diode arrangement can function as a frequency doubler. So this is net current output. 
So in one of the cycle of the LO diode D1 conducts, in other half diode D2 conducts and since they are antiparallel, the current directions are reversed and this current variation happens at a frequency of omega LO by 2 which is the supplied frequency. Now G1 of T which is the diode conductance for the first diode D1 is this, G2 of T is this. You observe that both these conductance waveforms are out of phase with each other and hence the net conductance which is sum of these two conductance waveforms is like this and which is at twice the supplied frequency at the LO. So the net frequency with which G of T varies is nothing but omega LO even though the supplied frequency is half of omega LO and this is how the mixing of omega RF and omega LO is achieved and uh, you get the desired IF signal. You might wonder what happens to the mixing of omega LO by 2 and omega RF. So uh, this fundamental mixing is avoided to appear in the output because one of the diode acts as a short circuit for this mixing and also for mixing with all the odd harmonics of omega LO by 2. So with this arrangement only the mixing products arising because of omega RF and omega LO will appear at the output and others will be terminated or they will circulate around here. So this is how uh, a subharmonically pumped mixer works. Next we will see an important mixer type which is called as image reject mixer and this is the circuit that we are using for image reject mixers. So we have two hybrids, 90 degree hybrids, one is the RF 90 degree hybrid, another is the IF 90 degree hybrid. We have two separate mixers and the LO is given using a 0 degree power divider. So basically the LO given to both these mixers are in phase. Now let us consider what happens when we have an image signal along with the desired RF signal at the input. When the signal passes through the hybrid at this point both the signals will be shifted by 90 degree in phase. So RF and IM both have a phase shift of minus 90 degree. At this point both will have a phase shift of minus 180 degree. When the mixing action happens so this is VRF is at minus 90 degree phase, LO is at 0 degree phase. If a mixing between these two happen the IF generated because of that mixing, so IF generated because of the RF signal is at a phase of 90 degree whereas when the IM signal which is at minus 90 degree mixes with the LO signal which is at 0 degree phase, when they mix the IF generated due to the image frequency is at minus 90 degree phase. Similarly at this end the LO signal at 0 phase mixes with the RF signal which is at minus 180 degree phase and it produces the IF with a 180 degree phase output. LO signal mixes with the image signal and it also produces the IF output with a 180 degree phase. So remember that the phase difference is observed at this particular point at the mixer output whereas the IF output because of RF and IM which is the image are at the same phase. Now these two signals when applied at the input of a 90 degree IF hybrid let us see what happens. So the IF hybrid have two outputs, one is the LSB IF output, one is the USB IF output. So at this particular point we will see that this signal will further be shifted by 90 degree. So we have 90 minus 90 which is 0, we have minus 90 minus 90 which is minus 180. At this point from this uh, particular input signal we have a 180 degree phase shift. So we will have 180 minus 180 which is 0 we will have 180 minus 180 which is again 0. Now if you see the IF components because of the RF, this one and this one they are in phase. The IF components because of the image they are out of phase. So they will cancel out and at this particular port you will get the IF component only because of the RF signal. Similarly in the USB IF the RF parts get cancelled out and the IF output because of the image retain. So at USB IF port you will get an IF signal only because of the image signal. So this is how resulting IF components because of the RF and image are separated out using an image reject mixes. So we have studied various uh, types of mixer circuits 
in this particular lecture let's review so first we considered a diode how it performs as a mixer how a fate fundamentally gives mixing action then we studied single diode mixers using fates as well as diodes then we studied single balanced mixers we studied double balanced mixers we studied uh, subharmonically pumped mixers and finally we studied image reject mixers so these are the main types of mixer configurations that are used and in the next lecture we'll see how these different mixer circuits in compared to each other perform for various performance metrics that we discussed in the first lecture we'll see the comparison and based on that we'll see how the design aspects have to be considered while designing a mixer thank you